Welcome to our the Orlando Sentinel editorial board um, interview with U.S. Representative Darren Soto, representing U.S. House District 9, which is an Osceola-based district. Um, um, his opponent, um, we did try to find a way to accommodate um, his, um, his um, desire to not do virtual interviews, and he made a sincere effort to figure out something that would work for both of us, but we weren't able to come to that conclusion. So today we'll just be proceeding with Representative Soto. But we do urge people to go online, look at the information for both candidates, and read our excellent coverage. And um, you'll have, we believe, all the information that you need to um, make up your mind in this race. And of course, we will be making an endorsement as well. Um, so with that said, we are going to jump right into questions. And um, I'm going to start with a an issue that is, I believe, on the minds of many people. Do you support the current policy of the Fed in increasing interest rates? So we saw today uh, interest rates, uh, excuse me, uh, we saw inflation still about 0.1% higher than uh, last uh, month. So we know inflation is still a big issue. While gas has dropped precipitously, uh, and I expect food prices to eventually drop because gas is driving uh, the food increases. We also see rent being a big issue right now as that continues to rise. So I certainly know that we have a little more work to go as far as uh, raising uh, the interest rates until we could get inflation, which is one of the top issues uh, right now for um, residents of Florida's 9th Congressional District. Uh, so we have a little further to go. I'm hopeful that by the end of this year, we'll have enough of those increases that will have cooled the economy enough without getting into recession and keeping our strong, low unemployment uh, going. Uh, so I certainly support uh, the current policy and uh, believe in an independent Fed. So I wouldn't tell the Federal Reserve what to do. They were appointed to make independent decisions that are nonpartisan, and I support uh, that role. With that said, we are seeing um, an, an increasing um, here in Orange County, what is being termed a crisis, though not yet an emergency, um, on affordable, the access to affordable housing. What do you believe Congress should be doing that it's not already doing to boost the supply and make sure that it is affordable? So first, we brought back over $75 million in rental housing assistance from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, that was 40 million for Orange County alone and another seven for Orlando. Orlando also used $39 million from their American Rescue Plan dollars uh, to help out with affordable housing. We saw 11 million go to Osceola, another 17 million go to Polk County. Uh, so the American Rescue Plan definitely helped uh, over this last uh, two years and many of these local governments still have that funding. It's uh, unfortunate because I voted for the Build Back Better Act, which had over $250 billion to address affordable housing needs across the nation, uh, but that didn't make it into the final Inflation Reduction Act. So we have more work to do of uh, funding the Section 8 housing, funding the home program, which our local governments use to uh, purchase land for affordable housing, funding the low-income housing tax credit, and, of course, um, working with... Uh, uh, officials at HUD. We were uh, proud to work with uh, Secretary Fudge to get our former mayor, uh, Jose Alvarez, as the regional HUD director. And we saw that appointment already yield fruit with uh, a nearly $6 million grant uh, to uh, Osceola Council on Aging for new seniors housing. Uh, but we have more work to do on that, that's for sure. If I may follow up, I, you mentioned the money from the ARP and it brought to mind the fact that the last two years really has seen a lot of a lot of government help necessary to to get us through the pandemic as as budgets as that money goes away as budgets sort of uh ease back toward normal um 
but besides housing that you've mentioned, what other priorities do you feel like need to need to stay and, and, and need to move to the forefront as we move forward with a with a smaller uh, budget nut? Sure. So higher paying jobs are going to be critical. Uh, infrastructure, protecting our environment are the three things we're uh, very focused on. Uh, we're working on bringing more high tech jobs and advanced manufacturing to the area. We saw Bridge the other day get a $51 million grant for uh, chips manufacturing. Uh, and that's before the CHIPS Act even fa uh, passed. So uh, we're in great line to get additional funding and build multiple fabricators to help um, raise high wages and help uh, defend the homeland and lower costs of everything from cars to appliances. We'll also be working uh, within the military budget for the simulation and training cluster in uh, UCF, uh, robust uh, space exploration funding and commercial space for uh, our uh, cluster out at Cape Canaveral. And then, of course, Lake Nona, where we work with uh, Nemours and with uh, UCF Medical School and others to continue to boost uh, Medical City. We're hoping to get a new VA tower and then infrastructure. Now we already have the first design money for what I believe will will be in line for three billion dollars in uh, federal funding to expand SunRail and Brightline. Uh, also, we'll be working on expanding the Beyond I four Ultimate ten lanes all the way down to twenty seven. And then, of course, we're working to continue to restore the Northern Everglades region, including uh, sixty four billion or excuse me million dollars we got into the recent Water Resource Development Act to help clean up big Lake Tohopa Caligo, Lake Ronnie Mead, and, and some other areas in the Northern Everglades in the district. Thank you. If I, if I can uh, throw in with another question and switch gears just a little bit, um, I wanted to talk to you about abortion. Obviously, that's been a, uh, a hot topic and a lot of, uh, a lot of changes, a lot of debate the last, the last few weeks and the last few months. I was wondering, with all the, with all the changes that have come down, um, what specific changes to the law or, or, or what specific um, segments of the law do you support at, at this point and, and which do you think are misguided or have gone too far? I was disappointed in the Supreme Court's decision to reverse 50 years of a fundamental right to choose for women. Uh, I proudly voted for the Women's Health Care Protection Act, which have which codifies uh, Roe v. Wade, uh, uh, a right uh, to an abortion up to the point of viability. Uh, that is uh, my belief belief of, of where we should be, other than if the life of the mother is at stake. And uh, certainly uh, we'll be working both on the federal level and on a state level uh, to, to help defend a, a woman's right to choose. We have a right to privacy in the Florida Constitution. So we had the first front uh, fall, sadly, in, at the Supreme Court level. And I urge the Senate to pass the Women's Health Care Protection Act so we can create a federal statutory right. Uh, but on the state level, we'll be working with our, our partners um, to make the case to the Florida Supreme Court uh, to continue uh, with the understanding that the right to privacy protects a woman's right to choose here in Florida. We're seeing us become a, uh, a uh, more difficult neighborhood when it comes to choice. Uh, we're in the South surrounded by states uh, that uh, may or are in the process of uh, eliminating women's right to choose. And uh, this is something that renders half the population to being second class citizens, to not being able to have autonomy over their bodies and make choice about their families, their careers and their lives. So something we take very seriously and we'll be looking for opportunities to help uh, reshore up uh, this uh, critical fundamental right. We saw um, this month um, California passed some of the most aggressive um, greenhouse gas emissions legislation that we've seen in this country. Um, what do you think Congress should be doing to limit um, greenhouse gas emissions? How much further can they go? I was proud to vote for the Inflation Reduction Act, which invests a historic $369 billion over the next 10 years to decarbonize our economy, uh, whether it is uh, boosting solar, extending our nuclear plants and going to green hydrogen, uh, where we would run solar electricity through water and create hydrogen to burn our gas plants uh, where the product is water, right? Uh, so I support that plan going forward and now we have the funding to do it. Uh, we also boosted the uh, electric vehicle tax credit, 7,500 for new vehicles, 4,500 for used vehicles. 
we'll see solar panel uh, subsidies continue to uh, help people for those as well as uh, helping decarbonize um, both uh, manufacturing and agriculture. The plan uh, calls for uh, reducing uh, greenhouse gases, uh, CO2, by uh, 20 40 percent by 2030. Uh, it also is aggressive about methane, which is even worse than CO2, uh, by getting the last uh, remaining uh, small fracking companies under the methane rule uh, to ensure that uh, that's protected. Florida is very vulnerable to climate change, whether it is uh, intensifying hurricanes, whether it's rising seas, whether it's extreme heat. And uh, our quality of life is at stake. The future of the human race is at stake. And uh, after years of uh, being frustrated that we couldn't get something done, we finally uh, put forward a, a down payment that's going to be key uh, for the future of our nation. And now there's a lot of oversight that's going to need to be done under the Energy and Commerce Committee that I serve on um, that I hope to continue to do that work and, uh, and ensure those funds are spent well. Since you're on that committee, um, I, I did want to take advantage um, and, and follow up and ask you, you have called out two issues that are directly pertinent for Florida. Uh, three, um, the storms, heat, and sea level rise. One of the big issues in Florida in particular has been the the existence of the National Flood Insurance Program and then the way it's structured. Do you, are you satisfied with that program and its very great impact on Florida's um, coastal, coastal edge? What, and do you think these changes are needed and so what changes? So we actually end up being a donor to the flood insurance program. We pay about a third of the premiums, but return back about 25% of the, the payouts. I suppose in a, one way, it's a good thing that we're not getting as many floods as, as Louisiana and Iowa and other places. Uh, um, but certainly I would support any changes to the formula that would make it equitable. I get worried about uh, a tax to try to uh, shore up the program through formula changes rather through budget, because you have uh, multiple states uh, that don't get a lot of benefit from the program and would want to see it end. And uh, I think multi-state solutions to some of these insurance issues are absolutely key because it spreads the risk over more folks. So I'd be hesitant of any formula changes unless it was going to specifically help Florida out. And I'm, I'm, uh, if it comes to it every now and again where the program needs additional funding, uh, we have to make the tough decisions and and uh, dig into the budget if we can't uh, do it other ways. You are being so marvelously concise with your answers. I have to sneak one more in there. Um, does, does the nation, does the U.S. national cap fund similar to what, I mean, we have FEMA and a lot of programs are administered through FEMA, but they do not work the way Florida's cap fund does. Do, is this something that, that needs to be a national investment? A national catastrophe fund would be a godsend for Florida and many other states in the Gulf. Uh, and if we included uh, fires out west and, and, and certain extreme drought issues, uh, certainly that would make sense uh, by being more proactive. Uh, there are some states, particularly in the North Midwest and in the North in general, that don't get nearly as many catastrophes, although we're seeing with New York and other areas that they're getting more. Uh, so it's tough to get up some states on board that don't ex face it at the extremes that the, the Southern United States faces. And so right now our national catastrophe fund is FEMA, as you mentioned, which uh, you know we've had to dig deep over and over. Um, but it also is a great opportunity to talk about the cost of climate change. Uh, every year we have to put more money into FEMA because of these extreme weather events. And so when you look at um, the $369 billion we spent in the Inflation Reduction Act uh, over the next 10 years uh, to invest in this, uh, it not only because we raised the corporate tax to 15% minimum, uh, saves $300 billion on the deficit, but I'm hopeful by the end of this 10 years we'll see a, a, a leveling out of the number of uh, extreme events. If we did nothing, uh, it would get more and more and more 
costly uh, for these, uh, these disasters. So ideally, we'd have a national uh, catastrophe fund. Uh, going to be a tough road to hoe with some of the northern states, but I'd, be, I'd cast my vote proudly for it. It's in the best interest of Florida. Very quickly, I wanted to ask you about Medicare. And, uh, and obviously, it is of prime importance to Floridians, and, and Medicare and Medicaid are both uh, top of mind a lot of the time, seemingly more so lately. Um, what changes right now do you do you support to the to the Medicare and Medicaid system, and, and w- in what ways do you think uh, it's doing okay? So first, we uh, were able to finally allow. Uh, Medicare to negotiate drug prices, uh, which is absolutely critical. It's something that many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle have said they support, uh, but when it came down to it, uh, it became uh, sadly a party line vote. This is going to help reduce drug prices. Um, Both Medicaid and the VA negotiate drug prices already. Uh, This is the wise free market decision to get the best bang for the buck. We also capped out-of-pocket expenses um, going forward. Both these changes are in 2025 uh, at uh, $2,000 a month. I've heard way too many seniors um, cutting their pills in half or in third uh, just uh, to be able to take part of the medication before the end of the month. Um, This is something that uh, is obviously a deep concern. We fought until the very end to try to expand the Affordable Care Act to close the Medicaid gap. Uh, That, of course, uh, uh, was something that we didn't get in. We're one of only a, over a dozen states that uh, sadly the state legislature and the governor didn't do the right thing. Uh, and prior governors didn't do the right thing, even though when I was in the state Senate, we voted to expand Medicaid. Uh, so there's a battle yet to go. But a lot of the states that did the tough decision to expand Medicaid, sadly, uh, said, why should we reward bad actors? And so we're, we're still <clears throat> in a tough spot with uh closing the Medicaid gap. Uh, I know there's been calls for uh, expanding to Medicare for all and other things. I'm, while I'm, I'm open-minded of those issues right now, I'm, I, I'm looking at uh, what we can do today, tomorrow, and the next day uh, to do that. I also support a public option, uh, which uh, I think is a key way to get the last 15% uh, of our district uh, into uh, into health insurance. Uh, we've seen great increases over the years of uh, of folks insured, a, a, a third reduction in the uninsured rate over the last 10 plus years because of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and of course, that's something that we need to continue to work on. Um, 2.7 million Floridians get their health insurance through the Affordable Care Act, uh, up over a million uh, since Biden has taken office just in Florida from extending marketing and opportunities uh, for people to sign on. And of course, the Enhancement Reduction Act, which continued those subsidies in the Inflation uh, Reduction Act. Thank you for that. Um, really quickly, sort of had the same uh, the same sort of question about Social Security. Lots of uh, lots of interest down here. Lots of changes and things happening. What are what are some recent uh, developments that you support and others that that you're uh, not in favor of? I support the Social Security Twenty One Hundred Act, which uh, would uh, have a minor uh, payroll uh, generator of of revenue for about 25 to 50 cents a, a week, but it would shore up uh, Social Security f- until the year 2100 or beyond. It also gives seniors a, a, a small COLA increase to, to help them with their expenses. Right now, the program is set to re- pay out less than full benefits by about 2032, 2033. We saw a lot of folks retire um, early, uh, which was their right at, at 62 or 63 years old uh, during the pandemic because of the threats uh, to, to folks. And, and so uh, when I talk to young people across the district and ask them if they'd pay a quarter to 50 cents uh, a week more to ensure that Social Security would be there for them and beyond, I get a resounding yes. So the program needs to be shored up. Sadly, it seems like Congress doesn't have the courage yet to do it until we're staring that uh, – that potential cut in benefits in 2023 or 2033, but uh, I stand ready to vote for uh, that bill whenever we get the opportunity. Congress should be addressing the biggest issues facing our nation. This uh, session, which was the busiest legislative body I've frankly ever served in, has done a lot of that, but there's more to go, uh, especially with Social Security and something that uh, is unfinished business. There's been a lot of discussion on both sides of the aisle 
um, regarding different ideas of what should happen with U.S. immigration policy. Um, Two-part question. Do you believe that the U.S. borders are appropriately secure? And then what, if any, changes do you support to um, immigration policy as regards um, permanent resident status and pathway to citizenship? First, I've supported uh, the Homeland Security budget under both President Biden and, and former President Trump. Uh, not all of them when they were trying to fund the wall, but uh, others of them as we got forward. And uh, certainly border security is important. I've been to the border just recently uh, in a bipartisan trip with, uh, with uh, Representative Tony Gonzalez. And uh, we see a lot of folks coming in from Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Haiti. It's not the same makeup that, that it's been before. And three out of four of those groups are probably coming to Florida. So uh, I believe we can expand the sensors and technology we have at the border. They can view any movement for th in a three mile radius. Uh, we could expand that. Uh, I believe our Custom and Border Patrol should be focusing on apprehension um, while let technology do the searching. And uh, we need a back office of civilians that can process immigrants who are seeking refuge coming across the border in a, in a non-law enforcement way, ideally. Uh, we do have laws that allow people to present themselves at the border and ask for uh, refugee status, and then uh, they get the opportunity to go uh, in front of a judge to prove their case. Uh, I certainly support uh, the president's uh, immigration plan, comprehensive immigration reform. I support the Dream and Promise Act, giving a pathway to citizenship for Dreamers and TPS recipients. And I also support the Farm Workforce Modernization Act, voted for b both those bills and, and co-sponsored the third that would give a pathway to citizenship for farm workers who have been here a long time. Uh, sadly, uh, this is something that could help our worker shortage and lower costs by uh, creating a, a larger workforce. We, we already are at 3% unemployment, so many, many Central Floridians are employed. Um, this would be a way to help small businesses and others uh, that are experiencing uh, worker uh, demands right now. So it could be a win-win for Central Florida and I'm ready to vote for it if given the opportunity. We would like to go ahead and ask you to um, make your pitch as to why voters should keep you on the job and what, you, what sets you apart from your opponent. This term we've had huge challenges and we've stepped up with major solutions. When I first got into this term, it was January 6th and I was trapped in the chamber and we almost lost our democracy, but we saw through. I was there when uh, Speaker Pelosi and um, Vice President Pence uh, finally gaveled down the last state and we ensured President Joe Biden and democracy uh, was at work. Then we passed the American Rescue Plan to help us recover from the pandemic. Shots in arms, money in pockets, opening schools safely, getting Central Floridians back to work. And then infrastructure. I have the fastest growing district in the nation. We grew 40%. So expanding Sunrail and Brightline, expanding I-4 and uh, helping out with airport improvements like we just saw the other day, another 50 million for that is critical. Then the uh, CHIPS Act to help boost advanced manufacturing in our district uh, over in Bridge and uh, in Neo City and Osceola County is gonna be key for high paying jobs like some of the other uh, technology clusters that I mentioned. We appreciate tourism and agriculture. Uh, we know we also have to diversify our economy. And then bipartisan gun safety reform, modeling after what we saw in Florida. Uh, people said it couldn't be done, but we got it done. Helping our veterans with the PACT Act, finally ensuring that uh, our veterans who faced uh, toxic exposure through burn pits, they won't have to wait like sadly we saw Vietnam veterans. And closing strong with the Inflation Reduction Act, lowering drug prices for seniors and combating climate change. It's been a busy session delivering for the district. All these are forward thinking, and now we have to do oversight and continue on with affordable housing and addressing things like uh, uninsured Floridians and affordable housing uh, going forward and um, up for the challenge and hope to earn uh, all the folks' votes. Thank you so much. And once again, you will find much more coverage of this race on our website. And um, as well, um, the candidates both have their own websites, which are extremely informative. Take the time to look and decide who you're going to vote for, uh, and we will be making our endorsements soon. 
um, thank you very much and um, and um, good luck.